Got Amy, it. You ready to take us home? Yeah, you bet. Let me share my screen. All good. Everybody can see that. Yep. 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 Great. So uh, last but not least, a couple of new Terraform features in 13.0. Uh, first of which is uh, GitLab's integrated HTTP Terraform state backend. And secondly, we've now got a merge request widget that provides a summary of your Terraform plan output directly within your merge request view. Um, our docs, uh, as uh, thank you, kind of, kind of like Christian and Simon both mentioned, are pretty solid here. So uh, if there's any product folks present or listening, thanks for an awesome job on that. Um, and they, they really do a good job of covering the what and the how of infrastructure as code and, and all of these new Terraform things that we've brought to GitLab. So I'm going to focus more on the why, uh, trying to mesh you know, what this is with how it fits with GitLab's value drivers and the conversations we're having with customers. First, uh, the HTTP state backend for Terraform. So for the un uh, uninitiated, which is me, I've seen lots of you know, talk about infrastructure as code. You know, I, I thought I knew what Terraform was, but I'd never actually got my hands dirty. So I took this as an opportunity to try and learn something new. Uh, and, and again, the docs really helped here. Um, so for those that aren't familiar, Terraform backends are what contains the state of your infrastructure. If you're, if you're not familiar with Terraform, it's a tool designed to allow you to declare what you'd like your infrastructure to be and to look like. Uh, and then it, it'll go through the process of, you can hit validate to sort of lint and check that your declaration is, is well formed. Then you, you do a Terraform plan, which compares what your declaration is versus what your infrastructure actually is. And apply tries to make the two match. Uh, and so the back end is really that, that stateful store of what actually is in, uh, in production. Uh, by default, if you just download Terraform or install it and run it, it's going to use what they call the local backend, and that is just like .tf state files that are like binary stores uh, of state on your local disk. That's all well and good, and it's fine if you're just a one-person team, but if you want to collaborate with others, having a shared store of state is really important to make sure that you're all singing the same tune. Uh, likewise, the ability to lock that down while you're doing a, an apply which can be kind of a multi-minute, quite a long process, depending on what you want your infrastructure to be and look like. Uh, being able to lock that and say, listen, like I'm making a change and everybody else that may be collaborating with me, please don't collaborate and step on my toes. So what have we actually done with GitLab? We baked in a, uh, a, a um, actually I think that's the next slide, so I'm jumping ahead. Um, for now, uh, the, the, the technical tidbits here are uh, that if you're, uh, if you're a dot .com user, you, re you really don't need to think about it, right? It just works, and I can show off where the HTTP endpoint exists and how that looks. If you're a self-managed customer, today uh, the sort of technical tidbit is uh, we use local storage, so it's like bar opt GitLab something where uh, state is stored, and it, uh, GitLab does encrypt that state, uh, but you can also opt to use object storage such as Amazon S3. Now the, uh, the PowerPoint dad joke I've been waiting all morning to make here. Uh, I mentioned, and I wanted to give specific props to Nicholas Click, who's the EM in uh, Configure, for a really good documentation. And I've linked here uh, uh, to his example project, which really helped me get going uh, from zero to 100 real quick. So the takeaway here, uh, really, if you think about nothing else, what to know when, when somebody asks you a question or when you're talking to a customer or prospect about this, we, we baked in a secure, encrypted, and lockable store of state via HTTP into GitLab that uh, follows both the authentication and the authorization models that are already in GitLab. So that helps really lower the barrier to entry for a team to adopt infrastructure as code or GitOps workflows and uh, collaborate effectively. I'll talk a bit more about that as I get into the demo here, but uh, the second sort of highlighted feature in 13.0 I wanted to cover was Terraform plan summary. So this is like a, a quick at a glance summary uh, of any additions, changes, or removals you're making to your infrastructure as, uh, as Terraform plan provides. But this appears directly in the merge request with a handy link out to the actual job that created that full Terraform plan output. Uh, we've actually gone a step farther 
and we've created a, uh, an inheritable or a customizable template as part of, you know, just like the auto DevOps build or test templates you can inherit. Uh, but you don't actually have to use it. You just have to sort of obey the, uh, uh, the artifact output here. And I've, I've taken a screenshot of at least a, a piece of what uh, that GitLab CI would look like. But it's the artifact reports Terraform object that the merge request looks for. And if that exists, and if it's well-formed JSON that it can parse, it'll uh, show a quick, you know, kind of one-line summary that I, I can hopefully show off here of exactly what Terraform has provided to you. Again, if you take nothing away other than this, uh, the, the point is by giving our users immediate glanceable information directly in the MR, we're helping them deliver better software faster, or in this case, better infrastructure faster. And now for the fun part, the demo. So I've got a public project here that you are free to clone or fork or, or uh, play with as you wish. Uh, that uh, I'll hope, hopefully it'll work, but as Mark has shown, live demos are always a bit of fun. Uh, the joke here is it's always good to be more efficient when, when we're running up GitLab's GCP bill. So what the project here actually does is uh, you can use it to spin up a, a Kubernetes cluster in GKE. So Nick, uh, Nicholas Click had, had a good example of using AWS and spinning up an EC2 instance inside of a, a defined VPC. And I thought I'd try something of a different approach and one of the different cloud providers to provide folks kind of a different choice of examples depending on what you, your customer or your prospect is interested in. So the project itself is, is uh, pretty straightforward. There's a GitLab CI YAML here defined. Uh, we define the image, we're using the Terraform image. Uh, and actually all of this was, uh, I, I admit, pretty much a copy paste out of the, uh, the template that I've linked in the slides. There's a before script that runs that actually defines an alias. And this is the alias that's used to convert the output of uh, Terraform plan, remove any sensitive credentials, and then uh, you can use that later on during the plan stage. Uh, pardon me, the, the build stage. This is the plan job. Terraform will show the output of, of plan and then convert, you know, you're piping it into convert report, which is, uh, then writes a, a file in the container, plan JSON, which uh, the job passes out as an artifact. And that's what really triggers the magic in the, uh, the merge request view. So the other stuff I'll show off relating to. Um, the HTTP state backend. So it's a pretty, um, pretty basic um, state backend. So it's, it, it, it authenticates via the use of, a, of an API token. Uh, so you, and it looks very much like another API call. So if you've got a valid GitLab API token, you can, you can do a, like a curl, like an HTTP get against your project ID, Terraform state, and then the project name. Uh, that should work. So this contains, in my case, this is version four of, of the Terraform, Terraform's understanding of my infrastructure state. And there's a big pile of JSON here that describes, you know, there's, there's some resources, like there's a VPC in Google's compute network. There's uh, a managed subnet. There's some Kubernetes details here, some node pool, et cetera, et cetera. This is all the information that, that Terraform uses to determine you know, what, what, again, what your declared state is and what, uh, what the actual state of the infrastructure may be. Um, yeah, let me show off the, uh, the MR widget and then I think I'll yield to time in any Q&A. So maybe uh, you've got a cluster up, but, uh, but your boss is on your shoulder and says, hey, listen, uh, <laughs> you're, you're, you're costing me 500 bucks a month for this Kubernetes cluster, you guys size it down. So in this case, uh, here's an example MR to actually make a very basic change to the gke.tf file, which is where you're, again, where you're de declaring your desired infrastructure. Previously, we had N1 standard one machines in the node pool, and you can maybe size it down to an E2 medium, which is like a, a lighter weight, less performant machine. Uh, again, the point of a merge request is collaboration, right? So uh, as a result of that um, potentially mergeable change in this branch, uh, you can see here that uh, the pipeline is run, was successful. And as a result, I've got a Terraform pl uh, plan summary here. It's a very quick, you know, it looks like four to add. So in, in the case of GKE and uh, Kubernetes clusters in general, uh, Terraform doesn't always necessarily uh, provide the most meaningful sort of net delta, but there's also a handy link out here to the, the full output of Terraform plan. 
which uh, you know, given some knowledge and experience, you'd probably be able to parse better than I, uh, that would help help you understand what are the changes that are actually being making made here uh, as part of this merge request. That's pretty much the summary. Any questions before we uh, run out of time here? I see some activity in the doc. It looks like, uh, Mark, you had a quick question here. Oh, yeah, it looks like I answered it good. Yep. So is that widget, uh, did that happen automatically just by doing the report or they have to push that in the team? That'll happen. It's, it's pretty much analogous to the same way like the JUnit XML or the code quality reporting works. As long as you specify that artifact Terraform report object, so any job that passes that out and provided it's JSON formatted, uh, the MR uh, will show that widget provided that artifact has been, has been created and it'll parse it and give you that sort of changes, additions, deletions. Okay. okay. But I imagine it requires a specific job name as well, right? I don't think so. I think it's just the presence of uh, That's what I want the artifact. Know. Okay, the artifact. But I, I could be wrong. Um, I don't. I don't think we're too opinionated about how the job is named. Like, if we look at the, well, you know what? It's something we can experiment with here. Um, Have we used the job? This job was called anything else before. I don't think so. Yeah, for, for code quality, security, all the SAS, DAS, and how to have a specific job name and yep. a specific artifact name and format for it to appear in the uh, merge request. Artifact name I could see, but I guess I hadn't looked at the job names or just taken whatever the defaults are, so. Let me take that offline. I'll try. I'll, I'll try re renaming this from plan to something else, and I'll let you know. But that's a good, uh, good thing to be aware of. Oh, yeah, and... Sort of fun fact, uh, it's becoming a tradition for me. Every time I'm asked to, or every time I volunteer to do like a, a release showcase, first thing I hit on this was a, a horrendous bug. So uh, do not put any periods in the name of your project uh, because that, that if there's a period in the, in the project slug, the Terraform backend just 404s. So I sat there for an hour wondering, what am I doing wrong? Like my Terraform backend doesn't work. Uh, and I've opened an issue, uh, the, the engineering team is on it, but uh, everything, I, everything I try and demo, I just break. So product folks, beware. <laughs> hey, Jane, uh, great presentation. Uh, I had the uh, next question. Uh, I was wondering, uh, is, um, our, our configure team, they implement auto DevOps and review apps. Um, I don't think that they, they make use of like, you know, uh, Terraform or infrastructure as code tool. So I wonder, does it, does it make sense to try to re-implement uh, the review apps feature, like just the whole provisioning of the environments? Does it make sense to implement that in Terraform? Do you see any issues with that in terms of how that would work? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an interesting question. I think you could easily sort of roll your own sort of review app-esque pipeline where, where like you say, you, you use Terraform to um, define sort of a, a, a short-lived you know review app environment that only exists for the for the duration of the mr being open um i think in the case of review apps today there's probably not much that actually changes from an infrastructure perspective right like you're really just um you're making an ingress change which is probably a bit sort of below the, or maybe above the layer of terraform so if you think if you think of a terraform is like in the case of kubernetes managing you know, what zones or regions should your cluster be in? What size of node do you want to use? Uh, it's not to say you couldn't do that with Terraform. And maybe if there's any folks in the call or that have expertise in Terraform would state, state an opinion like, oh yeah, you could definitely manage that in Terraform and make that change in Terraform. Today, how do we do it? We use, like we just pass a change to the ingress, like the Nginx ingress um, chart, right? To, to turn up like a, a specific sort of review app domain name. Yeah, I think like from the last time I, I read through it, it's like there's a specific job that spins up. Uh, I guess it, there's, it does that deployment, that ingress um, service deploy and, and all those other components. I was just wondering if like, um, if there are any plans to try to re-implement that using Terraform tools. But yeah, I think what you said makes sense is that the nature of the change is not that dramatic. It's just, you're just spinning up a temporary environment. It's probably just the same. Um, deploy every time. But Love the question. And, and I think it'd be interesting to see how we evolve in this, this way, right? Uh, like I asked the question in my, one of my last slides there. I think the combination of like infrastructure as code and how we evolve there 
plus what we're doing with releases and release evidence. I think that's going to be really neat to see how those play together. I know we're at time, so uh, I'll yield back to Chris, but uh, thanks for the question. Thanks to all our presenters today. I know uh, Simon and Christian had to drop off, but big thanks to them, to Chloe, uh, Mark and Jamie. Uh, thanks to John Woods for the idea to kind of have a separate focus area on this versus just doing it in the all hands. Uh, really appreciate the support. Great questions. We will see you all next week.